Okay, let's talk Suns Wolves, a matchup where it seems like neither fan base is super confident in their team, especially Wolves fans with this matchup, given how it's gone with these two teams in the regular season this year. And I know the first thing everybody wants to talk about is like the amount of mid rangers the Suns take and how many mid rangers the Wolves give up, and we'll definitely get to that. Although it should be said that in the last couple weeks, the Suns, their three point rate was a little higher. And they were giving the ball to be a little bit more, allowing KD and Book to play a little bit more off the ball. Could have been a coincidence that the three-point rate went up with that. Could have not been a coincidence. Anyway, and outside of that disastrous loss to the Clippers, there were good signs for the Suns at the end of the season with Beal also cooking in a few of the final games. The first thing to look at, honestly, with this matchup, when you look at like the game they just played and stuff, the matchups, the assignments, they do get a little weird. Like, Cat is on Grayson Allen to start the last game. Uh, you've got Conley on Beal. Uh, and very early on in the last game, you had a Beal post up on Conley. You know, it was like that in the game they played April 5th, which was a little bit ago. So that all gets a little weird. But um, I do want to start with the Wolves trying to score on the Suns before we get to, you know, great defense versus, you know, three star players and all that. A uh, quick matchups thing just in the last game Beal was on Ant. You had uh, KD on Cat, Book on Jaden, and then Grayson on Conley. And then when Royce was in there, he had time on Ant. My number one thing with this series is actually the Wolves' turnovers. It's to me, more important than the Suns' mid-range stuff because, I mean, you can see it on basically any of Ant's drives or screen actions in that game they just played where they are loading up on Ant like crazy. I mean, they are sagging off of Jaden McDaniel, so you've got a play where, like, Ant is going down on the left-hand side. You've got Nurkic kind of giving Gobert the baseline. At the same time, you've got KD hard helping off of McDaniels in the corner. Royce O'Neal is trailing behind Ant. He's basically just got three dudes just around him. And that becomes a turnover. You've got plays where you can just freeze frame it. And it's like Jaden McDaniels is left wide open on the opposite side of the floor as Nurkic is like stepping up a little bit. Then you have like Royce O'Neal helping in the paint, kind of picking up uh, Rudy, or sometimes it's going to be KD in that spot. That's going to be the number one thing to me between Ant's playmaking, between, uh, you know, Nikhil Alexander Walker or Jaden McDaniels or Conley, if he's ever left open, like them being able to beat the Suns consistently with those plays. I mean, Conley's decision making is always going to be there. It's just a matter of, you know, his size, his age, all that stuff. And speaking of Conley, they were having Nurkic drop back on those actions. If Nas, Reed, or Katz are going to be left open in those scenarios, I mean, obviously those dudes can make shots. Um, Finding Rudy on the roll, like, these are going to be the biggest things to me, and a lot of it's going to be from Ant. You know, Ant's playmaking was one of my big questions with, like, two weeks left to go in the regular season or whatever it was. Another thing, though, in that game was that the Suns had KD on Cat, and they were switching a lot of actions that involved Cat, which was kind of able to slow down a lot of screens that they run. And obviously, Cat will screen on the ball. They do the horns actions where, like, you know, Cat and Rudy are in it. And then between then, it can be like a Cat pop. It can be a Rudy roll or whatever. Um, but KD switching a lot of those actions, it just makes it a little tougher to just do whatever you want with Cat. And so whether that is, like, Cat going at KD in the post or forcing the switch and then Cat going into the post, like, that's the counter you think of. So maybe he can go at like Royce O'Neal or Grayson Allen or Bradley Beal or whoever or Devin Booker in the post. The thing with that, though, is that the Suns are also doubling Cat on these post-ups. And then it's a similar thing where they're daring him to make like the skip pass across the court and everything. Uh, it did also seem like the Suns were willing to have Nurkic kind of high up on Ant Rudy pick and rolls. Not like a super like trap or whatever, but he's up there for a second and then he gets back. And there's, there's going to be a little rotations on the back end. And so there's going to be opportunities if the Suns keep up this aggressive type of defense on Ant for Ant to make them pay with his passes, whether that's the assist from him or, you know, him swinging the ball around, find Conley, and then Conley can make the right play, whatever, or whoever might be spotting up on the wing. You know, it doesn't always have to be Ant getting the assist off of the aggressive coverage. Uh, but same thing with Cat, you know, if he's the one who's getting the doubles. That's the biggest thing in this series to me. Of course, Ant is going to take his shots, and yeah, he can go off. We all know this. On top of this, you know, Cat, who has had the occasional weird play-in game or play-off game where he picks up a bunch of bad offensive fouls from being too aggressive in the post or getting mad at the refs. You can't have that stuff. And to be fair, Cat has had some great playoff games too. Rudy is going to have to convert some baskets where he's got to put the ball on the floor. He has to catch it with a smaller guy on him on a switch or whatever. So yeah, uh, now we go to the other end, the Wolves elite defense versus the Suns offense, which sometimes is amazing. Sometimes the process is a little weird. Maybe not an emergency. Their three-point rate was better the last couple weeks. Anyway, uh, typically Jaden is picking up Book early in possessions. You have Ant on KD. You've got, again, Conley ending up on Beal, which can be a little weird. Cat ending up on Grayson, which is also a little weird. And then when Nikhil Alexander-Walker is in the game, he's typically on one of Book or Beal. You want to have the mid-range conversation? Here we go. The Wolves give up a bunch of mid-range jumpers by design. The Suns shoot a whole bunch of mid-range jump shots. That will matter. Now, with that said, with looking at the last two games these teams have played against each other, 
Uh, some of these screen actions where Gobert is guarding it and it's Nurkic screening for a book or Beal a lot of the time. Rudy is, it, it's still technically a drop, but you know when it's high enough up there, he's basically at the three-point line and then he's backing up. And then it might be like Jaden or uh, Conley trailing or whatever. And so there is a bit of a window there for the pull-up three, which Beal and Book have taken. Uh, but really my point is, it's not like Gobert is playing super far back on all of these screen actions. And so I just don't be surprised if that's what it looks like when we see game one. As I say that there was one play where um, basically Rudy was, again, like high drop on an action. And then Nurkic was able to get free on the roll. And then, you know, Cat was basically glued to Grayson Allen at the top of the key, or like on the wing, and so that made it to where Conley had to help on Nurkic, and that was just kind of an awkward play. Like, you know, again, it's weird where you you see Cat on Grayson Allen, but like this is kind of how the matchups end up being. And so Cat having to chase him around, or, I mean, it can lead to switches too, but if Grayson's moving off ball, or if he's screening on the ball as well, like it just, it puts Cat in a spot that is a little awkward. I mean, obviously the Wolves defense is still great, so I, I think they can figure it out but it's still weird now as I say that like there have been some possessions where Cat has guarded KD and I mean in terms of being a bigger body on KD I get it but if you want someone who can really pressure KD's ball handling then that's where Ant is going to be better at that than Cat is uh, Grayson's also been able to beat them with some drives off the catch it's not always just with his uh you know being left open on threes and yes there was also one play where Beal was able to get a pull-up three where Gobert could have been like a little faster but most of the time he's going to do his job because he's Rudy Gobert he's the defensive player of the year uh but I do think you could find yourself between kind of a rock and a hard place where like if you need Rudy to be higher up on these screens and then it's compromising your stuff on the back end, then it might be like, okay, well now we do want Rudy just playing back on these, but then you might be giving up more of the mid-rangers and then that comes down to, well, did the Suns shoot 47% on these or 57%, you know? And also like if the screen navigation can be good enough to where you can kind of like make them uncomfortable around the free throw line with Rudy right there waiting for him, like, you, you know, then obviously that can be successful for you. Uh, I have seen some discussion online about what about more of a switching scheme where you're asking Rudy to switch. And I do see the vision behind that. The idea is, well, they can't flow into the pull-up twos. Gobert, uh, in my opinion, is an underrated one-on-one defender, even if obviously best trade is his rim protection. But the thing with that is it just takes Rudy out of the paint completely. And then can you handle that with the rest of your defense, you know? So I don't know about that one. As far as matchup hunting stuff, yeah, the Suns are probably going to go with Mike Conley who does his job and the defense around him is great. It's just, you know, size, age, you get it. So, I mean, the obvious thing to think about there is KD trying to get the Conley switches and then trying to get into, like, his 14-foot jumpers. I do think this Wolves defense will be able to slow down the Suns offense a bit. I mean, they did do it in one game already this year. Cat was not playing in that game, but okay. The Suns still won that game because the Wolves offense still struggled, but all right. And I think the reason they will be able to do it is because between Ant and Jaden and Nikhil and Rudy and all that, I think... The screen navigation will be good enough. I do think they'll be able to pressure the ball handlers of Beal, KD, Book. I think they will be able to make them uncomfortable enough with Rudy waiting for them, whether it's going to be a pull-up three, pull-up two, whatever. And of course, there is a size difference here. But again, you know, they double-team Cat to try to take away some of that. So they're going to have to deal with that. But um, like the Wolves have advantages in this series. And as far as the mid-range thing, again, like I do think if the Suns end up taking too many mid-rangers, then the math might fall out of their favor a little too much unless they just shoot an outrageous percentage on them. As far as a quick rebounding thing, I mean, Phoenix's overall defensive rebound numbers are not amazing, but when Nurkic is on the court, they actually become one of the best defensive rebounding teams in the league. So we'll see if the Wolves are able to put Nurkic in some foul trouble or whatever. But the other thing, too, is because the Wolves are bigger, like, could they just kill the Suns on the boards? Well, again, when Nurkic is on the court, the boards have been pretty much okay for Phoenix this year. And uh, as far as who I'm going to pick, so when we first saw the series, I kind of wanted to go with the Wolves, even knowing that they struggled against the Suns this year. And then diving into it all and just seeing, once again, like Ant's struggles against Phoenix and the way that they just bring that extra attention on them. That's the one thing I can't shake. Like, I do think the Wolves defensively can slow down the Suns. Very adventurous take. The best defense in the league can slow down a team's offense. But it's the other side of the floor that I'm just too freaked out about. So I guess I'm going to go Suns and six.